Thank you for joining us for a very, very special day. I'm Carla Hayden with the Enoch Pratt Free Library, and today we are turning a page and celebrating the start of a new beginning here at the Central Library with a project that will benefit patrons not only here in Baltimore, but across the state of Maryland. I'm hesitating for just a second because I have to acknowledge that this project has been in the making for over 20 years. And it's been a long road to get where we are today, but I'm excited to announce the renovation and the restoration of the Central Library, State Library Resource Center for Maryland, finally, and I, this is in caps, starts today. Now, during the Central Library's original dedication in 1886, right there on Mulberry Street, Enoch Pratt generously gave a million dollars to the city of Baltimore to establish a system, quote, for the benefit of the present and all future generations. Now, this library system is used and enjoyed by city, city residents, but all Maryland's, from the Western Maryland to the shore. And I want to welcome all of our special guests today. Maryland's Lieutenant Governor, Boyd Rutherford. Baltimore Mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. We have state legislators, Mr. Chris West. City officials, oh, you can clap. Members of the Library's Board of Directors and Trustees, please raise your hands. We have donors and supporters, and as I mentioned, this project has been a long time coming. So let me go straight to what you might want to hear. What type of renovation and restoration will happen to this obviously beautiful and historic building? Well, I promise you that the historic integrity of this building that opened in 1933 will be enhanced. We have experienced architects and contractors whose expertise is in renovating historical buildings. I want to welcome our managing architects from Air St. Gross. <laughs> Lead architect from New York, Ms. Jean Campbell from Buyer Blender Bell. They have been with the project for over 20 years. And our new best friends, the construction management company, Gilbane Building Company. We're also pleased that the representatives and staff of the Maryland Department of General Services who will be managing the project are here today. Please raise your hands. We appreciate all of your help. Now the state of the art renovations to this building will improve the building's infrastructure, increase opportunities for research and learning and engagement. The project will complement this beautiful, not only structure, but the collection that goes back to the fifth century with the latest technology. But to put it in a way that I think everybody can understand and that uh, I was given this to keep thinking about, one of our architects said, Carla, this building's going to get a heart and lung transplant with a little Botox. So it will look just as historic and beautiful, but it will have the latest and the greatest. And I want to stress this point. The library will remain open during the entire period of the renovation. Now things will move around and you'll be coming in and out different ways, but the building will be open for the next three and a half years while all of this is going on. This building attracts more than a half million visitors a year. 
So we know how important it is. Some of the highlights, there'll be more public space, expanded training and conference facilities, creation stations to fuel imagination, a new teen and young adult wing. They'll have their own space, generously funded by the Earls, and our lead gift and the opportunity that we had to really get this project going with private funding. We will have an expanded and restored children's department. The fish pond will still be there. And it was funded by the Harry and Jeanette Weinberg Foundation. Ms. Rachel Monroe is here today. Please. We'll have new fish. And the heart of this building, the majesty of Central Hall, which will be made into a town hall with the latest acoustics. There'll be a screen, and if you look at some of the renderings around um, this hall, you'll see how beautiful this building can be. And we want to thank Miss Elizabeth Mosier for that. Job and Career Center right behind me, and computers everywhere. Family restrooms, new heating, cooling, fire protection, lighting, security, it's going to be wonderful. So, I mentioned Rachel Monroe and the Weinberg Foundation. I wanted to also give acknowledgement to the Joseph and Harvey Meyerhoff Family Charitable Funds, and also for PNC Bank, represented by Ms. Laura Gamble here. Definitely applause. <laughs> Amy Gross from the Franz Merrick Foundation, DF Dent uh, for their support for so many years, Jenny Adams and Neil Freelander for the Virginia Adams and Neil Freelander Humanities Collection, and so many others. We can't thank you enough for your support. We couldn't have done it without you. Now, I mentioned that this project is 20 years, over 20 years in the making. And I want to call up to the stage one of the people who has worked tirelessly on this project since day one. I met her 23 years ago. She looks wonderful still. So please, please welcome the person who knows this building inside out, was responsible for the children's garden, the annex, and is our main consultant, Ms. Sandra Vicchio. Thank you, Carla. I have to say I'm a little overwhelmed by that introduction. Um, they say that history repeats itself, and I think here at Pratt today, we can recognize that. The Pratt Library opened 130 years ago. It was the first library system in the United States with its four branches. It was free. It was for everyone. That in and of itself was a groundbreaking decision. By the turn of the century, the library needed some technological upgrades. So they added electric lighting, telephones, typewriters, and my personal favorite, a connection to the city sewer system. <laughs> then in 1926, along came Joseph Wheeler, and you'll start to see the parallels here. He was a visionary library director, and he began transforming the ways that the librarians would deliver the services to the citizens of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. He put books on open shelving so that uh, patrons could find them themselves. He expanded the collection. He created the children's department. He created later the young adult services department. He planned this new building to have specialized subject departments to support learning then. It was opened in 1933 and has stood heroically serving the citizens ever since. More than 80 years have passed and it's time for a complete renovation or heart-lung transplant and a little Botox, as Dr. Hayden said. And like her predecessor, Dr. Hayden has led the charge to transform the way that this institution serves learning now. Within this very beautiful and flexible framework established by Wheeler and his architects, Clyde Fritz of Baltimore and Tilton and Givens of New York, 
Air St. Gross of Baltimore and Bayer Blender Bell of New York are charged with delivering a 21st century library that respects its historic past. These architects were selected because of their skill and expertise. When the library is, renovation is complete, it will be much easier for 21st century patrons to find what they're looking for. The collections for adults will be on this floor and on the mezzanine level. The second floor will house the teen learning and leadership wing, and the children's department will be on the second stack level. So things are organized by those who use them rather than more um, complicated subject matter. The renovations will enhance the Pratt's ability to serve all of the citizens with more than 900 seats for the public, seats for more than 300 staff members, and shelf space for more than a million volumes, the library will be able to serve everyone. The project would not be possible without the vision of the Pratt's leadership and the staff who have been wonderful partners through this whole experience, the Baltimore city government, the mayor, the governor, and the uh, government of the state of Maryland. All of us are grateful for the opportunity to have worked as part of this statewide collaboration to recreate Maryland's State Library Resource Center. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandra. This project would also have not been possible without the hard work of the Pratt Library staff. And I'd like to single out our head of facilities who came here many years ago and has held this building and many others together with duct tape, string, ingenuity, and a lot of prayer, Mr. John Richardson. I mentioned that the library will be open for service, and that is largely due to the work of Mr. Wesley Wilson, who is in charge of the State Library Resource Center, Wesley, and Wendy Allen, <laughs> collection management. All of their staff members are here. Please raise your hands and we know that you made it today. We also want to thank our colleagues from around the state who are here. Ms. Mary Bicon from Washington County. Uh, and of course, a person who has really held down um, the project and made sure that we were known in Annapolis and everywhere else, our state librarian, Ms. Irene Padilla. Now I want to thank our next guest because she's been a library supporter and most importantly, a library user of this library since she was a little girl and now she's passing it on to her own daughter. The city of Baltimore is funding more than $5 million to this project, so we are honored to have Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake with us today. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Hayden. Uh, I was telling Dr. Hayden, I, I tweeted out that the, the Senate had, she had made it out of committee, and, and I, I'm a big critic of the gridlock in uh, Washington, but I don't mind if they slow it down. <laughs> I shouldn't be that selfish, but just saying. We could do worse. So it's a pleasure to join you in the groundbreaking for this incredible renovation. I can't think of a better reason to convene our local community, our state partners, and our private donors who have made this possible. I want to thank Governor Hogan, and I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Rutherford for their immense support of uh, this library and our city. Uh, we all know that uh, a renovation of this magnitude does not happen without significant state support. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, I'm grateful that, for the support and that you are here to celebrate this great, great day in Baltimore. Libraries have long been a safe location where people of all walks of life can uh, learn, engage with their communities, and libraries help build stronger communities by providing free access to books, training, education, and resource information. Our libraries create an equal opportunity for everyone to grow and to thrive. 
Today's libraries do more than just lend books. These institutions provide such services as free access to computers, programming for children, language classes, technology training, and they often provide a meeting space where individuals who are interested in sharing ideas can meet and can build in constructive ways. The Central Library in particular, which also serves as the State Library Resource Center, is the heart of our public library system. We're investing a combined $115 million in renovations, which are expected to be completed in 2018. The state-of-the-art renovations will improve the building's infrastructure and increase opportunities for learning, research, creativity, and civic engagement. And for that, uh, to the entire board, all of the volunteers, and for the leadership of this library, on behalf of the citizens of Baltimore, I am very grateful. Dr. Hayden, Lieutenant Governor, we're all thankful your, for your support, your leadership, uh, and the value that you place on this important institution, not just uh, in our city and in our state, but because we are clearly, uh, they just keep coming and coming and coming. <laughs> 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 That's okay, look, it's stuff right. happens. Um, I'm, you know, this, this library, uh, with, I, I believe with, these, uh, with the renovations and what we will be able to see when uh, the library is transformed, we will once uh, again be a leader in the nation when it comes to making uh, the public library system a true resource and an asset for our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I know we're a little anxious, and we appreciate it because in 1971, the state of Maryland, the General Assembly, passed a law in recognition of the Pratt Library's significance to the state and the entire library system um, that makes up the state. In fact, the woman who uh, was the state librarian at that time, Miss Nettie Taylor, is turning 101. Uh, in August, and she knows about today. She couldn't make it, but she definitely knows. In fact, she gave me some words to say, but I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Nettie Taylor. Uh, but, but as the State Library Resource Center, and this was her vision, it serves all Marylanders throughout the state, municipal agencies, school libraries, college libraries, and universities, and is unique from Garrett County to Carroll County and down to St. Mary. So we can't thank the state of Maryland enough for this project. It began with different administrations to the current one who has supported this project and we want to thank Governor Hogan for making sure that this project continues. So on behalf of the staff and the patrons, please, uh, Lieutenant Governor, express our sincere gratitude to Governor. And please welcome. Maryland Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford. Well, thank you, Dr. Hayden. And also, I want to congratulate you on your nomination. And I guess you, you've made it out of the committee in terms of confirmation. And you're waiting for the full confirmation. And, and that will happen. Um, I went through the process once before. And hopefully, yours will be more eventful than mine, where I got a call at like 11 o'clock on a Friday, maybe it was Thursday, when um, I was told, oh, you were just confirmed. And that was you know, by uh, one of the aides in the department called, because what the, just a little secret about some of this, the Senate will take these up just as they're about to recess. And it'll be, you know, an empty corridor, empty chamber, and the Senate uh, Majority Leader will stand there and say, by unanimous consent, I want to approve all of these appointments. They don't even put your name out there. <laughs> it's in the official records, but then you'll get a call in the middle of the night saying, oh, you were just confirmed, congratulations. And you say, oh, okay, I'll go back to bed now. So, he'll call your mother, okay, good. I don't even think, yeah, I don't even think I called my mother, I just went back to bed, so. But congratulations to everyone uh, who's involved in this exciting day for the Enoch Pratt Free Library, the city of Baltimore, as well as the entire state. And we all understand the power 
of information and knowledge. And together, they can open doors and enrich the lives and provide unlimited opportunities. You know, I, I often speak to young folks, and when it mentioned opportunities, that I tell them all the time that they're in the process of preparing themselves for the opportunities that they, don't, they can't imagine at that particular time. And being in a library, and I'll, I'll diverge in a minute from my, my talking points, but being in a library is a place where you can explore these ideas, you can explore what had happened in history and in science, and start to think about what may be possible in the future. Now, the divergence is, it's great to be in a library. You know, I, I go to schools often, and the newer schools, and I know the mayor runs into this too, they're called the media centers. I say, what the heck? It's a library. Come on. You know, we don't need to change the name. Miss Librarian there, right? They should be called libraries. So maybe that's going to be a piece of legislation. We'll see what we can do on that. Go back to my talking points. This library, which is one of the oldest free and that's very important. Free public library systems in the entire country is extremely valuable, not only to the city, but also to the state. Since taking office last year, the governor and I have been working tirelessly to improve the quality of life of all the, the citizens that we are entitled to or elected to serve. And it's been a priority for us to do everything within our power to help the city thrive. So in many ways, that begins by giving Marylanders the tools that they need to empower themselves. I can remember visiting libraries when I was younger and the importance of having the opportunities to feed my curiosity. In addition to studying my coursework, um, Dr. Hayden, I actually used to study when I was in college. I did used to study when I was in college. That's one, but I studied at the Library of Congress. Uh, so I, I appreciated going to libraries. I couldn't study at home. Like a lot of people, they can study at home. Uh, when I studied for the bar exam, I studied in the library. Um, when I took the second bar exam, not the same, I passed it the first time through. Not the same bar, a different state. I, I studied in a library because I felt I couldn't necessarily concentrate studying at home. So it's it's really important that we support projects like this. And the state of Maryland is very proud to support the renovation and restoration of the State Library Resource Center with an investment of $93 million. And thanks to the efforts of Gil Bain and the Department of General Services, who's managing this project, $28 million has already been awarded to minority businesses in this project. This Thank you. Thank you all. This is an investment in our kids. It's an investment in the people of Baltimore and an investment in the bright future of the state of Maryland. So with this groundbreaking, we are ensuring that all Maryland citizens, regardless of the neighborhood that they grow up in, will have access to unparalleled library resources. The success of the Enoch Pratt Free Library is truly a Maryland success. Thank you for inviting me here today and taking part in this, this ceremony, and congratulations again on everyone involved in this important project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Now, let's get this renovation officially started. You could see the shovels were jumping off of the shelves. I mean, 20-something years, we are ready to dig some dirt. So I'd like to welcome the mayor and the lieutenant governor, uh, Rachel, and all of the donors and the board members to join us for a group shop. 